Good morning. I'm uh, Steve Wilson from the University of South Florida. I'm going to be talking to, uh, to you this morning about um, a progression of thought and uh, technique for um, core decompression of shoulder uh, for a treatment of osteonecrosis of the humeral head. <clears throat> I just, um, thanks to uh, everybody for you know, having us down here. It's been a great trip for, the, uh, for our program for the first year down, and we're very happy to be here. And thanks to everybody um, at home uh, at the Moffitt Cancer Center and uh, the USF. A little background, there's two main causes, of course, for um, humeral head osteonecrosis. You have the traumatic and the non-traumatic. Main causes of uh, osteonecrosis in the body, we end up with um, a big divergence with the majority of them being in the hip, uh, which gets the most attention. But um, uh, it's important to note that about 10% actually take place not only in the shoulder, but the knee as well. There's some underlying reasons why um, the shoulder um, unlike the hip, is actually uh, fairly well tolerated. Um, you have, it's not a, a load-bearing surface like the hip. It's also um, uh, not as constrained um, within the, um, uh, the joint itself, and uh, it actually accepts much more deformity uh, before people often become symptomatic, and uh, the blood supply is uh, actually uh, improved. Um, it's just kind of a reminder of the uh, blood supply to the humeral head. Um, some of the underlying causes for osteonecrosis include um, steroid use, smoking, um, uh, hypertriglyceridemia, you know, caisson's disease, and alcoholism. The original classification by um, uh, FECOT um, back in the uh, 60s was modified by uh, Dr. Mont um, in the early 90s um, uh, when his, with his first article. So uh, a reminder about the staging. Um, stage one can only be found with um, either histology or um, by MRI. Um, stage two is the, the first that shows up on x-ray, usually with a sclerotic rim. Stage three um, uh, is, is the, usually the first presentation that most people pick up, and uh, it's with the uh, beginning of the crescent sign. And this is further subdivided according to how much the humeral head is actually involved. And then stage four is uh, progression onto uh, subcondylar uh, collapse. Some of the previous treatment options, those on the uh, left-hand side were for um, uh, early stage disease, uh, including uh, arthroscopy, um, simple physical therapy, uh, trapdoor procedures, and the earlier um, core decompressions. And those people that you know, have more progressive disease, uh, stage three and four, end up with either a, a total joint or a hemiarthroplasty. So there's several theories, um, though none has uh, been formally uh, proven uh, as to why a core decompression works, but it's thought to act, you know, much like um, uh, as fractures heal. You know, it helps promote revascularization. There's also some thought that the um, uh, underlying dead bone um, causes increase in pressure, and uh, this actually leads to osteonecrosis of the, of the uh, remaining uh, uh, cellularity there. So some of the first studies were done uh, were all um, open procedures and actually used very large um, uh, pins that were only passed usually one time. Um, the progression of this is we're becoming less invasive and actually starting to use smaller pins and making multiple passes. So this is the original article, uh, article that was referenced um, earlier by Dr. Mont. Um, uh, basically, uh, he took all comers and had a fairly high, what we would consider a failure rate with people um, going on to needing a, a, a total shoulder. Um, this was followed up by Laporte in the late 90s, who went on to you know, further subdivide it according to um, what stage of disease the people presented in. So our new technique was to uh, attempt to make it a, a less invasive procedure, again, using a smaller Steinman pen and making multiple passes. Um, our data was collected in the, uh, between May of 2002 and October of 2003. Uh, we uh, enrolled 26 patients, and these were all pre-collapsed patients, so stage one and two, that were, uh, who had symptomatic disease. Uh, our average follow-up was about 32 months, and we actually had a, um, a, a small group of people who had been treated previously at a, uh, outlying facilities. Our clinical measures, we used the UCLA uh, score because it not only um, 
uh, assesses function and pain, but it also gives us a degree of motion that these people had. Um, uh, and we define failure at, as a standard point of 24 or the need for arthroplasty. So going back through the literature before we did this, we came up with some things that we thought would affect our uh, uh, affect the outcome, including age, gender, previous um, steroid use, a, uh, a previous core procedure of some type, and uh, people who had multifocal osteonecrosis. And what we, all people were, um, uh, uh, received plain films, and those who had uh, suspected stage one disease got the MRIs. So. Our technique is relatively easy. Um, it can be done either supine or in a beach chair position, whatever we're comfortable with. Using um, uh, uh, fluoro uh, in the OR, you pass a uh, simple 3.2 stymon pin lateral to the uh, bicipital groove. If it's a small defect, you know those can using less than probably 20% of the humeral head. Two two passes were made. Larger defects, of course, a couple more times. Uh, care was taken not to uh, uh, get into the uh, uh, cartilage surface and the wound was simply closed with a simple nylon stitch. Our, uh, our post-operative um, uh, protocol was relatively simple. Um, we gave everybody a sling, said use it for a couple of days, and then um, please, uh, you know, take it off, start doing motion as soon as you can tolerate it. Um, we just asked that they did no, uh, no heavy lifting or overhead activities for eight weeks and then no high impact sports for a year. So of our patients, 25 of them had an excellent outcome with scores greater than 24. Um, we had significant improvement of uh, 13 points uh, according to the UCLA scores. And the pain, as you can see, was much improved. Everybody was very happy. Um, we managed to defer all uh, uh, patients from needing an arthroplasty during our time of follow-up. Uh, we did have one patient that went on to um, uh, collapse, but this was relatively asymptomatic and was treated simply with just physical therapy afterward. Um, most of the patients, as you can see, had significant improvement in uh, all uh, measures for our outcome. So in conclusion, you know, it's a relatively simple procedure. There's relatively no morbidity. Um, it can be done as an outpatient. Um, and all of the, you know, and all the patients that we had had alleviated pain, and uh, we were able to defer um, shoulder arthroplasty in relatively young people. Thank you.